Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back to kick off part 3 of the last 32 round. And we are going back to the kind side of the draw, and we are down in the bottom left hand side. So, in this session we are going to see MEJE10 going up against Asta. Then we will have Kaz taking a crack at Blood Moon, Gazmaniac going up against Tyrant King, and we'll be concluding with Verga taking a crack at Tenga. So without further ado, let's get on with our first matchup, shall we? Okie dokie, in the red corner for MEJP10, we have got an ulti Rhinus, and well, <laughs> they're going to get the first hit courtesy of the terrain advantage, and I believe it's going to be a crit. Not ideal for Asta. So they got type advantage and they got terrain advantage, but the terrain advantage won't won't be Emmy's alone because Asta also gets terrain advantage in this match, courtesy of the Lambiosaurus Magnacris status. Right, in the blue corner for Asta we have got a Ken Alpha Kentrosaurus. Now I will say, even though Emmy JB10 has won seven in a row here and has a 100 percent record, I don't think it'll be a formality that they'll win this match. We've seen it before with previous combatants, they win every match in the group stage, first knockout match they get beat. So we've seen it before. And Asta has had an upturn in form since the start of the tournament. They have looked a lot better. But they got to survive this terrain hit first. So I wouldn't say this is a sh oh, this is an easy weird W for every JP10. Okay, there we go, there's a hit, but again, the type disadvantage is going to limit our damage. Poison is definitely going to help. It's a tie. That triggers the Quake Saber, but that might not necessarily be a good thing. Although, the poison is. It's another tie. That's a third tie. Oh, and MEJP10 goes into the lead. The light recovery coming in as well. The power drain going to activate. <coughs> now, I will say, well, the light recovery is going to heal up a bit. So, yeah, Emmy's going to have a decent lead here. Well, no surprise there. <laughs> right, coming in next for Asta, we have got Megalosaurus. Now, Megalosaurus does hit like a truck, so... Asta's far from out of this. But it is a very good start from MEJP10. That terrain hit really done some damage. There's one. Oh, that's a tie. Now, Megalosaurus doesn't do very well with ties. It does seem to take a lot of damage. And that's not good for... Asta. Okay, there's a hit. And the warning effect as well. That's a good shot from Asta. And oh, look at that. Ulti Rhinus on the brink. And Ulti Rhinus going down. And it's just like that. Two hits. And we're level packing, practically. Right, coming in next for MEGP10, we've got Droplocephalus. I mean, it would be, it would kind of been heartbreaking for MEJP10 if they lose this match. You know, given how well they did to win every match in Group E, which was a very, very competitive group. The fact that they were able to pull away so early. Massive help. Okay, they get the first shot, an elemental power going to come in here. This Rockless has been very effective in recent matches for MEJP10. As uh, experts and Aaron Blade can attest. Ooh, but Aster's still getting, getting some hits on the board. And actually, should it come, should they go down to, land, to Magna Cristatus, they will get a crit of their own because of the terrain advantage. Provided this Euoplocephalus takes out the Megalosaurus, which looks at the minute quite likely. But we all know all that can change. And there's another hit. Okay, that's a tie. 
And that's another tie, and that's curtains for Megalosaurus. It'll also be curtains for Euoplocephalus, because coming in next for Asta, we've got Lambiosaurus Magnetostatus. I suppose if you're Emmy, you'll probably take this terrain hit. It's going to be wasted on Euoplocephalus, because it's got such little health. And it means that the Torvosaurus can come in without having to suffer a terrain hit. So you're probably, yeah, you're probably happy if you're MEGT Tango. But we are all square. <laughs> and it would have been a crit block as well. So yeah, a crit block would have activated, null nullifying the crit of the Torvosaurus had it come in. But this scenario stops that from happening. And the Torvosaurus can fight the full power. Right, coming in third for MEJP10, we got Torvosaurus, and well, we've hardly seen this thing at all. But it's got to step up here now if MEJP10 wants to keep their winning streak going. Can they make it eight in a row? Okay, that's a tie. I think this Slambio Mag is willpower type, so Ties will probably suit it. Stack up the attack power. Ooh, but it's MEJP10 striking first, getting that Tie Bomb going as well. That'll help. Oh, that's a crit! Is that going to be it for MEJP10? Have they done enough to win this match? I think that's a crit block as well. So that, this firebomb, coupled with a crit block, should be enough for MEJP10 to secure this win. Oh, he freaking killed it anyway! The Lambiosaurus goes down, and MEJP10 makes it eight in a row to go through to the last 16 round at the expense of Asta. Who, in all fairness, put up a really good fight, and I'd probably say got more hits in this match overall. But yeah, that was a very good contest. But it is MEJP10 marching on. Right, on to match number two. Okie dokie, in the red corner, representing Kaz, we have got Joe Boria. Well, this Joe Boria has been very hard hitting for Kaz in this tournament, particularly in early matches with the Hydro Cutter and Aqua Javelin combo. It was very effective. Okay, I don't think there's grass types in this matchup. But. In the blue corner for Blood Moon, we have got a T-Rex. Will this be the day that Blood Moon finally breaks his last 32 curse? And actually wins a knockout match in my tournament for the first time. Well, with these two, it's all about the big hits. And both of these two have delivered some earth-shaking shots in this tournament. Kaz with the Hydro Cutter, Blood Moon with the Blazing with the uh, Burning Dash, and it is Blood Moon that strikes first. Although, this T-Rex does have tight disadvantage against Agile Bori, which is going to be a problem for Blood Moon. And it does trigger the Hydro Cutter. Ooh, but Kaz not going for it. But it does leave the door open for Blood Moon to land another Fire Cannon. Oh, here you go. He's going for it. Ooh, doesn't get it though. Blood Moon's having none of it. He's going for it again. Oh, and he gets it! Okay, this is going to be massive. This is going to be a huge hit. The heroic buff. The type advantage buff. Look at that! Massive hit from the Joe Boria. Oh, going for it again. And getting it again. Although, don't really need it because the T-Rex is going down. And just like that, this match, I felt like this match was going to come down to who got the big hits first. And so far, Kat is landing the big shots. But that can all change because coming in next for Blood Moon, we got a Uteraptor. This Uteraptor has been 
Very solid for Blood Moon in this tournament. I'd probably say he's been more impressive than the t rex He's gonna have to deliver here because Kaz is well on top now. Another hit on the board. Okay, that's a tie. It's not ideal for Blood Moon. Another tie. Ah, there we go. That's going to be curtains for Joe Boria. And while Kaz holds the lead, Blood Moon is pulling, is rallying back here. Right, coming in next for Kaz, we have got Therizinosaurus. Secret to Goyo. Well, the Joe Boria did his job, and now it's up to the fairy to do its job. Landing the first shot, getting an attack boost going as well. I have to say, I've been pretty impressed with this fairy. Oh, elemental power, sorry. <laughs> Confused it with another person's fairy. Tight. That elemental power is going to help against this Utahraptor because it has all wind moves. That's a third tie, and Utahraptor goes down. Right then, coming in food for Blood Moon, we got Utahraptor. And you have to say, I'd say the biggest difference in this match so far has been the big shot of the big Hydro Cutter that Kaz got earlier in the match has given him this lead. Because Blood Moon has got some hits, has got hits in this match. But Kaz has definitely got the bigger one. And Blood Moon does need to get a big shot here to come back into this contest. The random number generator decides to work. Ooh, that's going to be a crit for Blood Moon. Badoosh! Needed this hit. Good shot from Blood Moon. Okay, that does trigger the core blade, though. Oh, but the fairy's not going to get it, and just like that, Blood Moon takes away Kaz's lead. Right then, coming in third for Kaz, we have got Kazmosaurus, Alpha Kazmosaurus. Dun, 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 dun. Can this Alpha Kazmosaurus finish off the job for Kaz? Well, right now, the momentum's probably with Blood Moon after those two crits. Okay, that's a tie. Ooh, Kaz getting that crucial shot there. A good hit from the Kazmosaurus. Oh, that's another tie. That's another tie. We have a lot of ties in this match. Neither side giving an inch, but that Deinonychus is getting chipped down. And that's going to do it. It's going to be... Oh, hang on. Might might survive this. But I think this is going to be lethal. Yeah, I thought it would. And it is Kaz's victory, and Kaz goes through to the last 16 round. Being only the second newcomer to make it to the last 16 round. Alongside Benjamina. Well, in Benjamina's case, that was two newcomers, so one of them was going to get through. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. On to our third match now. Okie dokie. In the red corner for Gazmaniac, we've got Alpha Kentrosaurus. Gazmaniac leaving it to the last round to secure their place in the last 32 round. Um, this is actually a very good field for Gazmania. They will get terrain advantage courtesy of the Super Titanosaurus in third. But in the blue corner for Tyrant King, we have got the Black T Rex. Tyrant King winning Group H. Well, mainly by virtue of the head to head they have over had over Gozzi and Black Rider. But yeah, all about the big hits for Tyrant King. 
Japan. We've definitely seen some big hits from them in this tournament, and I'm sure we'll see some more here. Okay, that's a tight. That triggers the Quake Saber. But Gazmania, last time they took part in my tournament, they did get to the quarterfinal. And they do land the first shot of the match. Oh, but here comes a big hit. It's a Crimson Flame. Maybe I underestimated these moves. Oh, oh, I didn't botch that. Oh, good, I did. I, th I thought I clicked rock twice then. <laughs> Yay, I did it. But yeah, this is going to be a massive hit from Tyrant Kit. Oh, not again. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, well, there's another big hit. That's a Magma Blaster. That's going to be curtains for Kentrosaurus. And Tyrant King goes into the lead. Yeah, in this matchup, Tyrant King definitely hits harder. And I think that could be the difference here. But coming in next four, Gazmania, we've got Taurosaurus. The ace, the mere uh, staple of their team. And it has been, I've been pretty impressed with it, to be honest. Black T-Rex imposter. Ooh, but it's Black T-Rex getting another hit on the board. Tyrant King extending this lead that they've established. There's a tie that triggers the Burning Dash. It's another tie. Hmm, Black T-Rex doesn't like ties, does it? And it won't like that either because that's a Burning Dash. And that would be all she wrote for Black T-Rex. Coming in next for Tyrant King, we've got Super Eel Carcaria, another heavy hitter in this team. Awake mode on three. Ooh, Torbosaurus get another hit on the board. Not that much damage dealt though. As opposed to this hit from Tyrant King. Right, that's twice. Can Gazmania get this hit? Oh, it's a tie. If he can get a hit here, he'll force the Awaken mode. Oh, but unfortunately the Torvasaurus is... Okay, actually. Yeah, the Torvasaurus is going to go down. That's going to mean that Tyrant King is going to have a chance at an Awakened hit on this Titanosaurus. Which also has a chance of an Awakened hit as well. And it does have terrain advantage, so it will get the next hit, which will be a rocket. But thankfully, for Tyrant King's sake, it will not use up the Awakened hit. <coughs> that will come next. But here we go. A big awakened hit here. Could seal the deal for Tyrant King. Oh, but they don't get it. That's a massive death grind from the Titanosaurus. Could that be a turning point in this match? All right, that's twice. Now, if, Ga if the Tyrant King can get a hit here, force the awaken mode on the Eocarcaria. Okay, that's a tie. And does get the hit. And this is a crucial hit because that's an exciting spaghetti. Well, we haven't seen this at all in this tournament. That could be a massive hit from Tyron King. And it's going to force the Awaken mode on the Eel Carcaria. Which is not ideal for Gazmania. He would have very much preferred to have an Awakened chance and an Awakened hit on the Ankylosaurus. But he's not going to get it. Well, unless there's like a couple of ties, then he might get it. Oh, there's one tie. 
But remember, this eel cuck does have heat eruption, but heat eruption is not a factor anymore. And he gets a hit! Massive hit from Tyrant King, and I think that's going to do it. Okay, Aqua Vortex gets triggered. Oh, okay, well this doesn't matter. But it is a flare sword. <laughs> but I think that's going to be it for Gazmaniac. That was their last chance. Aqua Vortex might spear them from going down here. Oh, they got a crit anyway. Could have done with that a few turns ago, but oh well, better late than never. Right, coming in third for, Ga for Gaz uh, Tyrant King, we've got Ankylosaurus. Can this Ankylosaurus finish the job? Or can Gaz Maniac mount a comeback? It's not at the realms of possibility. We have seen some comebacks in this tournament. But we're not going to see one year. That's it will do it. It's Tyron King getting the win. And they will go through to the last 16 round. So that's two newcomers now that we've got through. Good to see the newcomers doing well. Right then, on to our final match of this session. To find out Tyron King's next opponent. Okie dokie, in the red corner, representing Varga, we got Torvasaurus. Varga coming into this match off the back of four straight victories in the group stage. It's been really good. And they do have terrain advantage in this matchup, courtesy of Armatus in third. But in the blue corner for Dino Tenka, we have got Simon Tyrannus. Tenka coming in off the back of a, some, off a good run as well. Look, it looks strong in the group stage. And on this side of the draw, any one of these guys could put a good run together. They could go deep in this tournament. Ooh, that's a good start for Varga. That's a crit. No Volcano Burst, though. Okay, okay, that's a tie. No Heat Eruption from either of these two. Varga landing another shot. That's going to max up the tech boost as well. That'll come in handy. We should see Volcano Burst here. And we do. And that tie is going to be curtain for Samuel Tyrannus. Just like that. Varga going into a 1-0 lead. Right then, coming in next for Tenka, we've got Megalosaurus. Well, it's not been a good start so far, but this Megalosaurus can easily pull it back. Okay, that's a tie, but again, that's what Varga wants. And that's what they want as well, another crit! Okay, there we go, there's a hit for Tenka, finally getting a shot in this match, and it'll be a big one, because it will activate the crit block, Tie Bomb will come in, that'll slow Varga down. Right, so the uh, Negalosaurus will be going for Paper. And getting another hit, another tie bomb. This is better from Tenka. And those tie bombs should stop any chance of heat eruption activating via a tie. And here is that tie. The tie bombs will go off. And now will be curtains for Torvasaurus. Right then, coming in next for Virga, we have got Joe Boria. Well, this, I remember this Jorboria caused me a lot of problems. Mainly the dino stuff for being the biggest issue. Oh, 
Okay, there's a crit, and that's going to be curtains for Megalosaurus. Right, coming in third for Tank Dino Tank, we have got Super Triceratops, Awaken Mode on three. And they're in a big hole here because Armatus comes in third with Terrain Advantage and Type Advantage. Varga well on top in this match. And well, Tank Dino Tank. Okay, gotta get rid of the dino stuff. Okay, there's a Futaba Cannon, that's not good. Type Advantage will limit the damage though. That is a saving grace. But it can't afford to, to take too many hits from this Jorboria. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Okay, that's a good hit. Type Advantage will increase the damage there. Okay, twice. Oh, but remember, the Dino Stuffer from the Jobori is going to put a stop to that crit. Is that going to be it for Tanker now? Well, it is Awakening Time, and the Dino Stuffer is gone. So they can get a crit here. Oh, that's a tie. Well, if they can... Well, it doesn't matter, because Armatus has terrain advantage. Oh, that's a crit, but the Dino Stuffer is going to stop that as well. I think they probably would have preferred to save that for the Armatus, but it doesn't matter now because it's done. But now, this Triceratops cannot afford to get hit. One hit and it's game over for Tanker. And well, there is that hit. Of course it's a hit for Virga. That's going to seal the deal. This might not be lethal, but Armatus will come in with terrain advantage and get the hit anyway and win the match for Virga. I would have preferred it to be lethal, to be honest, but oh well. And yep, that tile do it. Virga will go through to the last 16 round to go up against Tyrant King. And Dino Tanker will bow out at the last 32 round. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Right, we'll have a look at the brackets and we can end the session. Interesting matches here. So all three newcomers making it past the last 32 round to the last 16 round. And in this case, one of them's gonna be in the quarterfinal. So there is definitely potential here for one of these newcomers to go all the way. Although the big threat on this side is definitely MEJ 10 100%. And Kaz is gonna have a tough match against them. And this one, well, four wins, five in a row for Varga. Looking really strong, putting a good run together right when it really matters. And Tyrant King also looking really strong with the big hits. This this side of the bracket is honest, honestly so, so open. Anyone can make it all the way. But yeah, that's going to end this session here. So I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for next time where we will conclude the last 32 round. And until then, ta-ta. Mm -hmm.